Uh, this is eHobbyist blog, a blog of electronics hobbyist activities aimed at city dwellers who have limited space, limited money, and limited time. My name is Neil. Welcome. During this video, we will install BNC connectors as a means of interfacing the prototyping system to the outside world. Having printed off a template for center punching, I now need to tape it to the upper panel. Let me remove everything that I need to protect and cover it up. Mask it off. I don't want metal shards getting into everything. And now let's uh, center punch all of these holes. Initially, I was thinking of doing RCA connectors as well, but they tend to proliferate. Once you start putting RCA connectors in, what next? Phone plugs and mini phone plugs, and before you know it, you have every connector in sight. BNC connectors are being used because they interface to anything and everything. There are adapters available commercially, relatively easy to make adapters if you don't have them. Moreover, the frequency response for BNCs, I'm using a 50 ohm insulated version here, the frequency response can go as high as 4 gigahertz, which is way outside and above what I normally do. Well, now let me measure this, this BNC connector that I've got three-eighths of an inch for the inside threaded portion of the BNC. And now I'm going to tape off a universal bit so that I have some indication as when to stop drilling. I don't really like universal bits. They tend to wander off too much, but I don't really have an alternative. Me, these holes are not exactly where I wanted them, but they're not terribly far off. Now, let me remove this template or what's left of it. I still want to keep the masking on. And now I've got to increase the diameter of these holes until they're just wide enough to accept the BNC connector. Now, I'm using a reamer to increase the size of the hole to adjust large enough to accommodate the BNCs. We get pretty close tolerances here, much better than if I had just used the universal bit in and of itself. The universal bit I used to drill a hole slightly smaller than what was required and use the reamer to finish it off. Now, let's get rid of the burrs with a deburring tool. See if we can't get through all this metal work. I still need to deburr the smaller holes, and I'm using a large Phillips head screwdriver to do that. There are any number of tools that are better than that, but I'm just too lazy to go after them. Doing both sides here. The top side is essential. Now we're going to press fit these solderless feed throughs two feed-throughs per BNC connection, one from the outside shell and one for the center conductor. I'm now pressing home the uh, feed-throughs with a flathead screwdriver. And I need to test these feed-throughs to make sure, in this case, my probe will fit in easily and I haven't distorted the feed-throughs. And having confirmed that, it's now time to uh, install the BNC connectors. I want to make sure I install these BNC connectors hand tight because I know I'm going to have to remove them at uh, at least one point in the future when I go to repaint the top panel. Now we got to connect the BNC connectors to their corresponding feed-throughs, and that means cutting some hookup wire, red for the center contact, black for the outside, outer contacts, and let's uh, strip those wires. 
generally a lot easier to use this automatic wire stripper than the other wire strippers I have. Now what I'm going to do here is put a bend in the wire, feed it through a hole in the VNC conductor, and then crimp it. And we need to do that three more times. I want the wires to be crimped and to basically stand alone so that they can be soldered and while they're being soldered don't be moving around and causing cold solder joints. You just crimp that. And now some liquid flux. And finally let's get some solder on this joint. Using a Hacko soldering iron dialed up to oh about three three fifty degrees because I need enough heat to heat up the contacts in the BNC connector and Hacko does not have a great deal of thermal mass and so I need to heat it up heat it up a little bit I just want to make sure that I don't maintain contact with the soldering iron too long. I don't really want the solder joint to be 350 degrees. I want it to be just enough to melt the solder and for a second or two let the solder flow. Now I'm connecting these hookup wires to their corresponding feed-through lugs. Once those are connected and crimped in place, I'll begin soldering these things. There's a question as to whether you can do this and not degrade the frequency response of these connectors, and yeah, I probably am, but I don't visit the neighborhood of 4 gigahertz all that often, or ever. If you confine yourself to audio frequencies, which is where I spend most of my time, you can get away with an awful lot of sloppiness. I don't think the position of this hookup wire is particularly critical. The solder joint, however, does need to be uh, done well. Or well done? No. Done well. well. Some of the stuff is done in real time, some in double time, but the stuff that's done in real time, you get a sense for just how long it takes to heat up one of these solder lugs with this hacko. But other than thermal mass, it's a very nice soldering iron. It really is dead on for temperature as far as I've been able to measure with my thermocouple attached to a digital voltmeter. Now, in this case, I'm, I'm attaching these red uh, wires to the solder lugs first because that's easier, and you'll see why in a minute or two. And now these guys are crimped in place. Put some flux on. Flux is an essential part of the equation. Let's get some solder applied to the feed-through lugs. Ah, it's moving. That's not good. Keep an eye on that. And it looks good from here. It's difficult to tell. The angle on this uh, camera is almost straight down, which has certain advantages and many disadvantages. 
Okay, now I've got to twist the ends of these wires so that they don't flare out. And I'm going to uh, tin them. I think I'm going to tin them. I hope I'm going to tin them. It would be a grave mistake if I did. Yes, I am. Okay, put some liquid flux on the wire. And now I tin the wires. I'm using a reverse action tweezers. When you press down on it, the jaws open. When you release pressure, the jaws close. So it makes it much easier to hold something in place. You're not exerting any pressure to clamp down on the wire. And you can also uh, clamp the tweezers and not worry about releasing pressure on it. Now the center connectors are soldered and it's time to clean up the flux. And this time I'm using just isopropyl. Not too much of a problem with the flux and as I proceed you will see that this is sufficient. Normally it's a good idea to use a combination of acetone and isopropyl or, or use commercial flux remover. Okay, so this is good. There's white center insulators on the BNC connectors. Flux stains removed, and now it's time to test the continuity. Center should be continue with the, the left side and the shell with the right side of the solderless lugs associated with the BNC connectors. In this video, I modified the panel diagram to contain four BNC connectors and printed off the relevant section to be used as a template for center punching. I drilled holes for the BNC connectors and associated solderless feed-throughs, then installed them, and soldered the BNC connector contacts to the associated feed-through lugs. Finally, I tested the BNC connector continuity. In the next video, we will be starting work on the power supply. If you like this video and the idea of the channel, Click on the YouTube thumbs up icon. If you want to be notified as to when the next video is available, click on the YouTube subscribe button. If you want to suggest future directions or topics, make corrections to published videos, or voice your opinion on related matters, then leave a YouTube comment. If you want to see supplementary material that cannot be easily presented in video form, such as high-res graphics, files in different formats, lists of references, I'll go to the corresponding website. Until the next time, good day.